So Chris, tell me, where does your affection, passion, interest in flowers stem from? Well, Phil, I, I kind of think of myself as an accidental florist. When my brother bought his first flower shop, I was 15 years old. So I've kind of grown to love it. And it's been really fun to watch how the business has evolved over the years from one store on the Upper East Side of Manhattan to a telephonic commerce company, to an e-commerce, to a mobile commerce company, to what we are today. Going back to that time, tell us what were your favorite and least favorite parts of working in that flower shop? Well, working in my brother's flower shop, some of the favorite times I had was making deliveries, and especially being here in Manhattan. I grew up in Queens, but it got me to parts of the city I would never have gotten to otherwise and get to know a little bit. Some of my least favorite parts was the hours. When we'd work the holidays, we'd be there for two or three days straight, working around the clock, maybe grabbing a nap in the back room when you could. But it's rough. It's a rough, tough business. What's your favorite flower and tell us why? My favorite is probably the anemone. And it's, uh, I love it because of its vibrancy, the colors they have, and its simplicity. It's just a small tubular stem, stands single, no real petals on the stem, up by, except by the flowers, and then this vibrancy of color in it. It just kind of stands there like, here I am. Tell us what is uh, a secret to make your flowers last longer. When you get your flowers, you want to give them a fresh cut. And you cut them on an angle with either a sharp knife or its clippers, and then keeping the water clean. So everybody knows that roses are synonymous with Valentine's Day, but what are some of the other flowers people should consider? Tulips are very popular. Gerber daisies, which for us is the flower of the year. Uh, daisies, orchids are very popular. But if you want to say I love you, nothing does it more like a red rose. In the 30 plus years you've been at the company, are there any particularly memorable or standout orders that, uh, that you got? The thing I'm most proud of in my career is when we were asked to decorate Yankee Stadium with flowers after 9-11 for the Prayer for America. And we put out words, so many people from our company volunteered their time and services, suppliers volunteered and donated product, florists from around multiple states came in, and to watch everybody work round the clock and then go and decorate the stadium like we did, covering the pitcher's mound in flowers that look like an American flag and all around the bases, something to be really proud of. Chris, we're about to put together this bouquet, but first tell me what flowers we're dealing with already. Sure, Phil. So we're already starting off with our cushion palms in here, our, our uh, snapdragons, these beautiful purple snapdragons. We have some of the filler flower, the limonium, the wax flower. We have the carnations in here. It's really re ready to go with the focal flowers, our beautiful Gerber daisies and our roses. You ready? Yep. All right, let's do it. Let's start with the Gerbers. So tell us, uh, what are some of the, what's the first golden rule of putting together a bouquet? Well, I think let's start with the focal point. I want, I'd like this Gerber daisy to be right up, right in the top, just sitting above the, above the fray a little bit. We put in the taller flowers, the liatris that we mentioned before, the snapdragons, put those in. This gives us the shape at the top. Now we're filling it out and rounding it out. So we start kind of from the top down. Well, these look great, if I do say so myself. So thank you for the instructions and happy Valentine's Day to you and, and to, yours. And to you as well. Thank you very much. They look beautiful. <laughs>